Hello there, this is Russ Buecher from Control My Joystick. And on this video, we're going to take a look at how to configure a 3D connection, six degree of freedom controller with Control My Joystick. Now, these controllers are um, very interesting devices. They basically allow six degrees of movement. So that's up, down, left, right, forward, back, and then rotation around the X, Y, and Z axis. And these controllers have primarily been used for CAD and 3D design programs over the years. And uh, what Control My Joystick has done is taken these controllers and allowed them to be used in games. And they're very capable and very solid game controllers. So we have a separate video which reviews the three different uh, controllers that the 3D Connection sells. And uh, so if you'd like to find out some more about those controllers, check out that video. But otherwise, let's take a look at how you would control and uh, configure one of these controllers in Control My Joystick. Okay, so I have Control My Joystick here up and running and I have a uh, profile. I've just called it Elite and Dangerous. And uh, okay, let's see how we set it up. So there's so a couple of things to check here. First of all, we're gonna open up the log. Okay, and I'm just going to clear that. We have a 3D X square uh, panel on the sidebar here. And what this panel shows is the input levels from the controller. And it also shows axis groups and individual axis from the controllers and allows you to configure curves. Now, I have a... a uh, Space Mouse Pro on my desk right here connected. I'm just going to move the, the controller around a little bit. Nothing's happening because I do not have this enabled yet within Control My Joystick. So I'm going to go up to uh, the input menu, down to 3DXWare, and click on it. Now, 3DXWare is the driver software from a 3D connection, and you need that for using their controllers. So before you can do anything, you need to install 3DXWare 10 uh, from 3D Connection. You can download it from their site and it, it's free. So uh, once you have that software installed, it comes with some test applications, the things that help train you how to move your hand, you know, for um, to use this controller. and. Uh, and it's really good practice just to give it a try on that first. And you'll just want to ensure that it works properly with their test applications before you try to get it working within Control My Joystick. Okay, so now within Control My Joystick here, we're in the 3DX Square configuration screen. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable it. Now, if I just click on Enable, then OK. And you'll see in the log here now that it is attempted to connect to it, and it has. It shows you which type of device is connected and the firmware version, and it's enabled. So now I'm going to just take my hand and move the controller puck, and the puck is that little uh, round uh, cylindrical thing in the center of the controller. And if I look up here, you can see how it is moving the position indicators for each axis. Now the axis we have here is a TX, TY, and TZ, and that's the translational X, Y, and Z axis. So translation means basically movement along. So this is uh, movement along the X axis, and I'm just moving the puck from side to side or from left to right. And translation Y, and that's forward and backwards. Translation Z, which is up and down. And then there's rotation X, which is rotation around the axis, which is um, stretching from left to the right. And then translation around the Y axis, which is this one right here. And translation around the Z axis, which is like a twisting motion. And we also have this area here, BU, that basically shows which buttons are currently pressed. No buttons are pressed now, but if I press on the, uh, say this one it shows up, that's the menu button. And the Fit button, and if I press more than one button, it shows a combination of it uh, right here. Okay, so let's take a, a closer look at uh, this 3DX configuration screen. 
So I can also show axis values. So I'll just put a check mark here. And now you can see we have uh, values uh, on each axis. And the, and the range of motion is from negative 350, like this, all the way to positive 350. I'll go back into the screen and I'm just going to turn that off. Now we also have smoothing. What smoothing does is reduces the jitter caused by, you know, the shaking of your hand. And uh, because you move the controller puck so such a small distance, any amount of shaking in your hand is going to cause some you know, kind of be amplified is going to cause quite a variation on data uh, that goes to your joystick driver. So uh, what you can do is set a depth of two, and which just means is that it's averaging the past two uh, data point readings from each axis. And uh, you can crank it up a little higher, maybe to five. So now it's averaging five. But the higher you make the depth, the more control lag there is. So I recommend by default is to turn it on and set it to two. You can always experiment with that setting, whichever works out best for you. We also have some voice commands. You can, uh, you've seen perhaps previously, um, there is a place here to set the joystick buttons. And here we can have landing lights and uh, up to 128 different joystick buttons. And uh, so if I go into 3DX where here, if I have enabled voice commands, all I have to say is bind button, and it's going to bind whatever this button is currently to your game. It's going to basically send a key press for uh, button number one. And you could tell it to bind the next one, and it'll jump down to say number two here and bind that, or the previous one. So that's just a quick way to bind those if you need to. And we also have access translation voice commands. So now the tricky part here is that when 3DX where is installed, it also installs its own keyboard, mouse, and joystick driver. It's called a KMJ driver. And a game may be listening to that. And you know, when you move your controller around here, uh, your game may be detecting that motion. What we don't want to do is to have the game bind to that driver. And the only ways around that is we can disable that driver, but that means that you really can't use your joystick or uh, your controller for anything else. Or we can just leave it enabled and use these voice commands to transmit um, controller data through the tether script driver, which the tether script which the Control My Joystick installer uh, installs. So what we want the game to do is listen to the Control My Joystick driver. And the way we do that is we use these voice commands. So if you are in a uh, game and you're trying to bind, um, you know, side to side, um, and you're trying to buy, and you're trying to bind say side to side movement on the X axis, then you basically say bind a translation on X axis and that voice command will be recognized and the uh, data will be passed through to the tether script driver and it'll now be bound in game. And we'll have some uh, demos showing how to do that on, on different kinds of games. Okay, so I'm gonna hit okay. And so we could see that the joystick uh, is receiving data from the tether script uh, driver. I'm going to go back here to 3DX where we could see the data that's coming in from the Space Mouse Pro controller. Now what we have here is a controller um, axis curve group. And so what that means is when you create a profile, you get a default axis curve group. And an axis curve group has six different axes. Translate X, Y, and Z and rotation along X, Y, and Z. And here I've popped up one of the curve editors. And we could see whether we have enabled an axis. 
and uh, whether it's inverted or if there's any trim or a dead zone. So what you can do here is you can set a axis group for different curves. So let's say this set of curves I'm going to be using for landing. And then you can create a, another set of curves by say duplicating this one and we'll call this combat. This allows us to set different axis sensitivities per axis group. So if you are bringing your ship in and your game and you want to land and that requires a certain set of um, axis response curves, you can either set a button to on your controller to respond to that and set to the axis group, or you can maybe use a voice command. And then when it's time for combat, you press a button or use a voice command to switch to combat instead. So let's take a look at how we set a curve. So I'm just going to right click and edit, or you can just double click on a curve. And here we're translating, and here we're editing the translational X axis, the side to side or the from left to right movement on the controller. By default here, we're gonna have a flat curve. And I'm gonna take this controller now, and I'm gonna move it to the left, and I'm gonna move it to the right. If you look at this controller indicator on the bottom here, you see there's a top one and the bottom one. And this, this top one is the controller raw data. Okay, this is exactly how it comes out of the controller through the, the um, 3DXWare driver. I'm just going to move it a little ways to the right. And I'm going to try and hold it steady. And you can see how it shakes around a little bit. Well, that's just the shakiness of my hand. Now, the bottom one here is this raw data with this curve and smoothing applied to it. So you'll notice the bottom one, because it has smoothing applied, is a little bit behind the top one. And right now we have a smoothing level of 2 uh, if I was to go higher, it would lag a little bit more. Okay. So now let's try adjusting this curve. Now this is the times 1.0. Here's times 1. Here's times 3. And so right now it's kind of a one-to-one -one relationship. Um, if I was to go up here and invert it, now if I move it to the right, the raw data goes to the right, but the curve data goes to the left. Move to the left. The curve data and the data sent to the joystick is actually going to the right. So if I go and invert it, you can see when I move to the right, the curve data moves to the left. Move to the left, goes to the right. Okay, so if I turn on trim, and uh, you know the value here is minus 350 to plus 350. If I put in a trim of say 50, positive 50, you can see now how the raw data is still zero and this is plus 50. And every time I move it, there's an offset of 50. So you can use that to compensate for a controller which is maybe miscalibrated or a bit older and is maybe off a little bit. And sometimes you'll configure a game and find that it just you know, drift is continually rolling or pitching or something. So you can use this trim to adjust it. Much the way you use maybe a trim slider or dial on a real physical joystick. Okay, I'll put that back to zero. And we also have a dead zone. And uh, quite often when you're gaming, you know, the, uh, the movement right around the center of the joystick range of motion Sometimes you don't want, you know, just the smallest little motions of your hand to do anything. You want it to just kind of uh, dampen out. So uh, let's give it a dead zone of 100, which is pretty big, considering the entire range is 700. And now I'm just going to move my hand to the right, and it's going to take a little while. You can see the raw data moving right, and eventually this will pick up and start moving. So this is the curved data here. 
The advantage is you can have some jittering around here in your hand or just when you're resting your hand, uh, but it's, it's really not going to affect the final output from the controller as it's passed along to the joystick. Okay, let's see what else we can do here. So I'll set this back to zero. Now you can adjust this by just clicking and dragging with your mouse. So here, if I wanted to have very little response near the center, I could do this. Now move my, uh, move it to the right, move it to the left. You'll notice right here, this moves, but it doesn't move much. And eventually it catches up when it's right underneath this one and where it's one to one. And you can adjust this and, and change this curve. So let's try this. So here it's moving and the response curve is finally picking up here with this one and it'll stay one to one right to the edge. And same with this way. Now you'll notice when I move these around, when I move one here, the other one on the other side of the zero line moves and that's because I have mirroring in, uh, enabled. So if I turn mirroring off and move it like this, you can get a real oddball curve. That's kind of on it very uncommon for curves. Normally you, you want curves that are symmetrical. And uh, so this is how you do it is with the mirroring. You can move these up a little higher if you like, depending on how much sensitivity you need. So let's try this. I'm going to move to the right. And as soon as it moves above one to one, it's really going to take right off. Get very sensitive. Now you can reset this and it just sets it back to times one. And if you right click, you can reset it or you can go set to these four different presets. And I'm going to set it with no explicit dead zone, soft. So there's a preset there and you can see how we'll put a dead zone of 50 up here, but no dead zone here. Now there's two ways to do a dead zone. One is to put it here and the other way is to do it like this. I'll go soft with explicit dead zone, which means the dead zone here is zero. And I've just brought these nodes of the curve down to zero. Because now when I move the, uh, the controller to the right, you'll see the raw data is going to move, but it's not going to do anything until it gets past the edge of the dead zone. So you can do it either way to establish a dead zone. Now you also have steep, same idea. Steep, no explicit dead zone. I generally find that soft with no explicit dead zone is a, a good one to start with. But sometimes you get these curves just right, you know, you've kind of customized them and uh, you really like to apply this same curve to uh, maybe some other axis. So let's say I wanted this curve on the, uh, trans on the translational Y axis. So what you can do is you right click and you go copy. And you go close and then you open up the translational Y axis. You right click and you go paste. And so now we've copied and pasted the uh, the axis so if I go back here it really just copied this information but it didn't copy the dead zone trim or inversion so it just copied the shape of the uh, of the curve so this is translational Y so I'm gonna move this controller puck forward and backwards so I can move it forward and now backwards now, if you wanted to move the entire curve up or down, you can do it with these buttons here. So I could press this one, it goes up, this one goes down, and these two buttons here just move at smaller amounts. And as soon as you click on close, um, it will save this. Okay, so that is how you set up a curve. Now, those curves were for combat. So if I go back to my translational X axis 
and look at the curve. You could see it was this one that we made. Okay, that's fine. But if I switch to the landing uh, axis curve group, and now I look at its translational x-axis, you can see how it's still straight because we haven't modified this one at all. So really a curve group has its really own set of curves. And when you are playing, uh, you know, if you were about to go into combat, you could have a button on your controller or a voice command that switches uh, with a, um, a script command to uh, maybe the combat uh, script that switches to the uh, combat axis curve group. And when it comes back time for landing, you could press another button or use another voice command to switch you back to the landing axis curve group. And uh, so this is really handy when you need to handle the requirements of different uh, axis sensitivities on your controller. So that's it. That's how you configure your 3D Connection 6 Degree of Freedom controller in Control My Joystick. Have fun!